Hello. Yeah, I think uh, time to start. Uh, I give five minutes delay. Um, so and that's good enough for everyone to join. I hope everyone is on audio and it is uh, my voice is clear to you all. You can hear me. Any any problems? Feel free to use the chat window, the question panel. This is the chat window because that is the one that I'm accessing frequently. Uh, if anything, I'll stop and uh, uh, get going. Uh, before I start, uh, so first of all, thank you, thank you very much for entering for this uh, training. Uh, you know, today I am going to cover simulation. Uh, the idea is to give you a brief uh, understanding on how we submit uh, details or your designs in our software. And on, if you are interested, you can definitely try this software at your own at your end and help you out with the evaluation license. So myself, I am Kapil Gaiswande, a territory technical manager for simulation products and based in Singapore. I am covering all these Asia Pacific South countries and India. Uh, this includes Australia and New Zealand. To so, like to give a brief on what we are going to uh, see. First of all, uh, yes, it is pure training, but I would like to spend at least five to ten minutes giving you an overview on what is all about simulation, what are its capabilities, what it can do. So I quickly finish on those things wherein you understand what are different capabilities of this product. See, uh, what would be the basic steps that are necessary for creating a FPA model and in order to do a simulation or finite element analysis. Right, we'll see uh, a simple structural analysis. How do we do it in our software? Yeah. Yeah. Thermal analysis. First, live simulation, optimum, and finally, I'll try to quickly cover a bit on dynamic and nonlinear analysis. After time is not enough, 90 minutes is too less. But to at least give a brief overview on what is the important difference over there and what do extra nonlinear and dynamic analysis. Find the future course of action, what you might want to do after this presentation is over. I'll have a quick look at that. Uh, I'll ensure that after each of these topics, because this is a long session, uh, as a session, I'll try to ensure that each one of these, after each one of these topics, uh, the gap for questions, and I ensure that all your questions are answered. If anything is left out, um, I'll try to get back to you even after this webcast is over, or when you are free to contact me after this webcast. And I'll recheck in. If anything is there, the chat window or uh, question. Uh, so I started. I can, can I quickly have one more call on, on to that window to check if you all could hear me clearly. I think most of you are optimistic and you all can hear me. So I'll just go ahead with this thing. I'll not spend any further time on this. One. Thank you. Thank you much for the feedback. Let's see. First of all, as I told, product overview, we'll have a quick understanding on what exactly is simulation and what are its capabilities. First of all, what I'm going to cover today is simulation. And if I go or dissect into the capabilities of this product, these different capabilities or features or applications that it has. I initially covered a few things like static, static, thermal, those. We have a look at it today in more detail. Uh, if I have to give a quick overview uh, in next 10 minutes, uh, this is the way I would do it. So first of all, if I take the first example, that is static analysis. It could be as I have a design going to apply a certain amount of force, and I would like to see what is the kind of deflection in the path, what level of stresses. I want to check different materials. So this is simple basic things that to understand. And this simple static analysis module, which you'll see in this in the due course of time how to do it, will help to understand it. Going cutting analysis, then I want to find out the life of the component. So it could be cases wherein the product is subjected to a certain kind of loading repetitively. And under such loading, I want to understand the life of this particular comment or would be the ideal warranty that I want to offer for this part. So that is what you'll be able to stand. 
and in fatigue. Sir, as is, it could be simple thermal analysis wherein I want to understand the temperature distribution inside a pile. I might want to understand the time effect. That is, after how much the pile will come to a steady state. And finally, it could be a analysis. That is, when temperatures increase or decrease, the pile is going to expand or reduce in size. And understand what is the stress levels, what is the deflection that come in the pile, where the effect happens. There are analysis. I am not going to cover this one today. Uh, but the rest and this capability, it will help you find out the natural frequency of a part. You can assign the frequency at which the part might vary and the action in which it is going to vibrate. Of the favorite models, it works very good, especially in terms of reducing uh, the size of the model in terms of weight, in terms of uh, Owning. You want to have a model which is optimized in weight as well as use the output that you want. Then the module, it will do it automatically and you will be able to uh, try out huge number of iterations to come to a final iteration which is of the best quality. We'll do an example on this particular uh, module today. And you'll get an understanding on how do we uh, use this module. I'm not coming to today. But as you can see, animation, uh, it could be as simple as a part or a part or a part is falling from a certain height. Or to mishandling, it is being dropped. And to understand the effect of such a drop on the assembly, the model that is going to help you do that. This module for motion analysis. So you visualize how an assembly would behave when it is going to move, what kind of forces and uh, um, reaction movement that come into each of the parts, then they will help you do that. So this is not only animation, but it is also uh, an understanding of the variation when the parts are at different locations in the system. It could be really doing multiple things. Uh, I want to understand the total time taken to do those things, when to start which operation. So in this case, it could be after rotation of 30 degrees, you are the hydraulic cylinder. You can so event based training can be started over here. You can understand the overall or the complete effect of the final uh, setup. We'll be covering these two modules today. Uh, again, they are time consuming. In future uh, sessions, if, if you are interested and if we plan to do that, we'll definitely try to imbibe them. But uh, simple cases. As shown on the screen uh, here, where it is a slender thin structure subject to an axial force. When such a uh, thin picture and compress the loading, it can happen that the part will buckle at a, at a certain force. At least of a stool, so when it is subjected to compress loading, the possibility of uh, buckle failure. It also has pressure vessel capabilities, which I'm not going to discuss now. Also do 2D simplification. That is, we can use plain stress element, plain strain element. Uh, we can use axisymmetric element. We have modeling wherein we can do uh, um, a analysis of a smaller chunk instead of doing the entire assembly. Uh, have a detailed idea or do more number of iterations on that small entity only. A few more high-end modules. One of them is the non-linear module. Where simulate non linear effects such as deformation or the part itself could be uh, made up of rubber or non linear material, you can understand that. It could be dynamic effect, something like this, where uh, the movement or relative movement between parts, and uh, we are also seeing the deflections and stresses when such a movement happens. Effects uh, being included over here. It could be kind of dynamic loading, it could be harmonic and term of what you see over here. It could be a simple time dependent variation of force or deflection. Cover so uh, the rest like uh, these models in detail. As do in the initial agenda slide, I'll be covering those uh, important features in more detail.
uh, before i go into uh, the exact way or how to do it and this is in sort of simulation i like to give a uh, quick uh, query on if you have any questions on this aspect as of now along with the next slide on the product uh, portfolio that i have shown you as of now okay as of now i believe no no queries uh so let's move on to the actual analysis of it uh, to, uh, it now this is for any finite element analysis software when we have a cad model and we are going to simulate it in the software or what is called as finite element analysis so, uh, if you see this chart here we start off with an actual cad geometry it can nice geometry as you can see with lots of fillets and nice details the simple part is but it could be complex with num huge number of bolts huge holes and many other things we always suggested that, that we idealize the geometry in a way which is good for net element analysis now um, this this is a bit of uh, argumentative and uh, difficult to put it in a single line but it is more of a user judgment also we need to uh, get rid of some features which are more aesthetic which are for uh, um, other and purposes than that of strength as and our primary aim or here is to understand the strength of the part if we are getting rid of those features and if it is going to lead to any strength of the overall geometry then the, this is the time uh, we get rid of them nothing wrong in keeping those uh, fine features also but it might end up leading into a huge model with lot of elements and a uh, uh, huge processing time now typically if you want to do more number of iterations it's advisable that we don't do it we might have uh, spending a lot of solutions and machine so a good analyst analyst i would always suggest to spend enough time on the optimization part wherein we are going to simplify the model to a state wherein it is going to be easy Now, uh, if you happen uh, when you construct this particular CAD model or solid model, I would say something called as a mathematical FPM model. Hmm? What you see on right side over here. Uh, when we do that, we define the kind of analysis, model properties. We'll see them in more details once more. Suppose loads and discretization. Discretization is another big step that happens uh, uh, while we do this particular process. in this process uh, what is called as meshing we are dividing this complete geometry into small entities now it works if it is uh, it solid mesh then we use something called tetrahedron for here so this model right side model that we are seeing over here these are tetrahedrons that have been used to mesh the entire model now this is called as discretization calculations happen for each one of these small elements and they are extrapolated for this entire model and finally something called a solving happens where in this discrete model which form of a mathematical model in terms of matrix is and get the final uh, output in terms of result i to go into detail on how exactly this works i have got a huge content on that but actually today i'll not be i just want to give an overview of the typical process when we have a cat geometry we simulate we apply certain kind of loads and boundary conditions we decide what kind of analysis is to be done and we solve the model to the final result so to be the typical uh, workflow for a analysis or a meta analysis so do you the few basic things that would be required and we have a certain component of design first thing from software point of view we need to tell it what kind of material has been used in the particular part that is the first step that we need to do and the software needs to understand if it has to in a particular part second working condition now this particular product is going to be on steel and it's uh, subjected to certain kind of 
load. It could be pressure load. Now this is an example of a piston. Could be forces that are being internal to the piston. Could be some bolts etc. which are present all over the motor end, and certain tightening operations are done. So obviously there will be certain amount of initial pre tension. Uh, as I told you, in this process, we are going to model all these things uh, in this software. So we need a 3D model. I told you this model is not only the CAM model, but, but this is the realized FP model, and they're done using the machine part of it. On doing these things, we are going to solve this setup, and it is very important that we know to expect. It is very important that we know the load, what conditions, and solve. With, we also need to have an understanding on what to expect after the solution is, is done. So after it's done, I want to ensure that the mass is minimum. I want to find out the deflection. I want to ensure that the deflection is below 2 millimeters or it is the factor of safety. It could be this. So such output criteria need to be defined initially. That benchmark on what to expect after the analysis is done. And that uh, I would say that would be doing the analysis to a target than just doing it blindly. So the final. Step. I would like to quickly check if there are any questions in the chat or participants. So what we heard was how simulation works. Uh, first of all, what are the capabilities of solid simulation? What basic steps required to do an analysis? You have basic input required for setting a certain product. Do you have questions? Please feel free to use the chat window. Okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah, I have a question which I would like to address before I go ahead, and it is like, can we please talk about for assembly? Now, uh, obviously, what is talking is true for parts and assembly. Uh, the software has been simplified to an extent that uh, there is no big differentiation. The action between parts are handled very efficiently. The sample that I'll be taking today will be on assembly system. Part would be what would happen if it in it is an assembly and uh, the parts of different material. That's it. again that will be covered in the first example itself. In how it works. So lot of I'm going to take this particular example. Uh, it is a simple static analysis that we are going to do, but it is on a crank assembly. Now all once you have the soft or those who have solid or PM or solid work to help. Um, you can see under help follow simulation, you will uh, There are certain set of examples which I will using today as well, and all from this particular location. So it helps for simulation and tutorial. And there is a path, a dead path on where it is. So going to do is this particular assembly. And to be more uh, specific, we are going to analyze the tank assembly, which is uh, Encircled with a green color over here. Now you see there are two paddles over here, the brown colored paddles on which a part is stepping up. This will uh, trigger a circular movement in this particular assembly. And let's we have to first of all apply that particular kind of force which this person is going to apply on the pedal over here. And see the effect of uh, those forces and resistance on this assembly. There is optimization, or the, I would say idealization that is also done, which we will try to understand. It is more the understanding part, and so on how we do the simulation of such an assembly. Actually, what happens in most of the companies, we uh, do not uh, design or manufacture the entire setup. We are more to a localized thing, where in this case, it could be a case where I am only designing and analyzing the assembly only responsible for that. So let's look how we do it. Let me start there. So as I said, formulation tutorial on this 
you will get all this content okay what i am this i am going to the first thing which is for static analysis taking this example of analysis of an assembly i'll click this one so this which i showed you on this screen on that particular part in process so which we are going to analyze this one, uh, today uh, if i drill down further you will see it would a crank pulley uh, there are two arm axle which is repair, which is on which uh, the crank arms are being with that we have an analysis of this particular assembly now if you go back the tab which is going to take you throughout the analysis or the product uh, is, i would say more than enough for driving the entire analysis so that first of all i go into the exact steps i have to show you something as study partner if you see at the top left over here at in the visors as that you are not aware or you are not comfortable or you don't know anything about this product yet a complete analysis just by following the steps that have been mentioned over here so when you study advisor you can see here to help create the proper study select one of the following here we are deciding the kind of analysis to be done now if we are concerned about excessive deformations or stresses the uh, important criteria for the user is reflections and stresses and about the effect of load and unload cycles so it's a tk case where continuous rotation and the axle is going to be subjected to tensile and compressive loads continuously concerned about sudden collapse under compression now the buckling case it is a different analysis that i showed you uh, we understand whether this is going to bulge under a certain load about excessive shaking so this is a case of vibration where continuous movement is going to lead to um, damaging the part and it will be the thermal case also so in this way uh, this simulator can help you go ahead with the kind of analysis that you want to do and go through different options i'm not this i believe uh, you can explore it later but i thought this is a very important tool which i would like to show you Next to the uh, second option, you can see the one of study advisor which is for you. Second one is new study. Okay. Or once you click that, the property manager, you can uh, uh, name study that we are going to create. The way it works is those who are using Solidus, you all are aware of something called as configuration. Each session will be tied to different studies and then create different type of analysis with this particular. Study, uh, sorry, configuration. So now there is a particular active configuration where I am creating a new study. I am running the analysis that is static. I am taking work here. If you, these are the different kind of analysis that this author can do, the initial slide that we show saw show all these different kind of um, uh, analysis. I will do static analysis and I will start. be any particular material in solidors or the cad part of it if defined in the for all the parts then we can direct it or here if not we can have the option of apply the material uh, in in as well or here we are going to override the material written by uh, the part of it if you back as our question which said what defaults have different material so simple as this thing over here you can see all those same feature trees shown over here in the left symmetry for each of those different parts and define a different material i am not highlighting too much on the material that we are taking but uh, the where the option is somewhere over here so i have four different material for here and take to these four parts in short i have an assembly which each 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 of these different parts have a different material hmm? most important thing uh, if you see over here there is something called concept these are thing but the simulation way or solid simulation we are defining the action between two parts in this case 
we have called as global bonded contract telling that all these parts are bonded to each other in a way okay so we are, need not worry too much about any other and with the um, um hello here so that we can see how what does it say uh, it would have that i am not going to cover each and uh, each step that has been mentioned in this cell as i'll be i know steps and i can go ahead with them but when you doing it on your own i would suggest uh, follow each each the steps mentioned in this tutorial that really help you to go with the analysis in the step by way it also is a bit of explanation uh, i would also suggest do not do any of these steps blindly as uh, it because simulation it is not only just knowing where the options are or how to do this analysis but important is why to analysis by certain operation or step okay uh, i am not following exactly what is given in the tutorial and i'll go ahead with it so into fixtures next important thing is i to fix this entity okay now uh, if you see the original assembly which was shown in the presentation slide something like this and on this red thing there could be a belt which driving the um, entities after that right? or it could be a belt which is create this resistance inside this part Okay, so take that. I go over here. Fix. Now taking the bed that is present on this particular uh, uh, pulley, I'm just fixing this pulley here. It could be something like that. Okay. Second, we are user is going to apply a force on particular panel, and definitely it will be in a certain direction. So let me select. If we apply that force, and maybe you can see over here, we can select different unit, and I let the user is going to apply a force of two hundred lb force on a particular uh, arm the um, pulley. I like. So now, of course, there are many other detailed things that we need to understand and do, but it could very simple analysis. as this one or this could most basic step for doing an analysis okay it was we just created a new study we fit somewhere we applied the force somewhere even material property definition is not required if it is different in the cad geometry then it can all be uh, imported over here this i just uh, property three or here or remember all the options that i am doing through the p3 over here are present at the top or here if i select the options to the top uh, dialog box i can run option over here and it starts what's happening uh, it is quite fast you can see in this uh, uh, the are already out uh, it did the thing and it did the analysis also i know what is meshing a few other options but what, what i want to show you is this would be the most basic steps that required for an analysis and this and enough to finish analysis you so saw the first thing that might be more interesting would be the um deflect as i said this uh an exaggerated deflection at the top you can see there is uh real of 71.46 here we have something called as uh, uh other which can act can uh, help you understand how to interpret the results or if we are confused on any of the result output if you here at the top again we have thing called as results advisor and select that it is giving something taking again for static analysis the value or deformation shape should not look right get a feeling that this selection is definitely skewed it is meaningless and then for that So if I click this one, it is giving you the different reasons. One of the simplest reason will be when I go here, you see the scale that has been used is automatic. We are seeing in the real realistic thing, and accept it. This is a deflection part. 
एल्फ नोड सो बी प्रोसीड विथ ए फ्यू मोर डिटेल फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट Okay, so in the direction of uh, connection side, okay. so I'll I think I'll deal with it a little. Now here, but when we create a new study, uh, we have this thing called as blow contact, which is all created. Okay, this is what is created. You can see the different options over here: no penetration, no penetration, global monitor. Okay, so over here, by default, we are telling all the parts are connected to each other firmly. Now it could be a case where I want to define those things locally. And to do that, what I need to do is right-click on connection, go extract, and we'll see these different options: no connection, bonded, allow penetration, etc. So, its own way of and uh, explaining them. Now, one of them, it could be a no penetration contact. Now, defining that there are two parts which come in contact with each other. But they do not penetrate between each other. They will remain. Um, they will. They are not going to uh, apply strength to each other, but they are not going to penetrate each other. So this one that would be a bonded connection. So take any one of them, and if I go to stop, or even over here, if you see these dialog boxes, first it is asking for stasis, stasis, and what else? Again, over there, it will. Take Tell you what it expects. That is, it is expecting phases. Now, here is one. I can see here. Now, this is where in this line that has been already created in North here. Okay, the uh, outside uh, flywheel. I just select this surface. So, select the uh, external surface of the top. I can go here. I need. Uh, Um, I can move around. I can see the first part, and I can select. There are ways of doing it. This is one of the ways which I might want to use, and I select. It. So what I created is well bonded contact condition. Same it could be no penetration. It could be the other two that it is. It could be shrink fit. The shaft is being tightly fitted inside this particular flywheel. Uh, it could be other condition. Okay. Uh, other it could is now. This was one example of connection set. It could be other thing like if I'm asking on how to create an edge well or a spot well or a bearing connector. So with any one of them based on the requirements over here. So if I take a P connector over here, it's as simple as it is asking for two this which that we have to define the pin details and that's it. The other strength whether you rotate it. Whether it is going to have a keyway, etc. Or case where you want to define a bolt connection and for a further different thing. Now with the 14 new features, if you have created bolted connections in the CAD, they can import it as it is into solid earth simulation. You did not define that thing. And uh, I would like to show you over here. If you go again, go to the tutorial. Uh, there are different things now. Few things that you asked me. One, it could be voltage connection. If you see here, pin cutter. These are which are important or of interest to you. Cutter. So one of the software at your end, you can explore tutorial. This will help you understand how to create those things. There is an an example on shell uh, edge weld. There is a weld example, and uh, uh, if it could be cases wherein it is a combination of shell and solid. So you can see that thing. These could be different examples uh, that you might want to explore based on your interest. Basic steps remain those what I showed you a few minutes back. 
I'll check the chat window if there are any other questions. Okay, simple static analysis. So understand that the law is applied in a steady way. Uh, there is no time dependent effect present here. The uh, fag end of today's session, I'm going to do an example on dynamic analysis where we can see the results based on time. So the reason asking on what could be the uh, time effect is to see the results at a certain time. That's how we go about it. I'm just rolling through the different questions. If there is anything quick that I answer today, uh, of course, I understand there is a limited time. I'm trying to cover the maximum possible things. Uh, definitely have the software and try the other things in detail later on. And to help you even in future. Excellent. Then how do you build the element before solution? So you saw it over here, I directly skipped the part of it and solved. And this could be a simple straightforward way of doing it. Uh, software moved to that level now, but we need to cover what are the different kind of machines and how do we do it in a few seconds. Yes, and we add material using, using a nation to this. Okay, and I'll answer before I show you if you think we can ask here, and that is ask the contact defined before machine or after machine. Definitely the contact have to be defined before machine. We define the contact after machine is done. Okay, so contacts are a part of machine, contacts are nothing but elements, and we need to add those are created before the machine is done. Okay, so two important things which I did not in detail when I did it initially. When you go to the properties of this study, you see uh, uh, different source here. Uh, um, kind of follower. You can see here, there is one thing as direct path, second is FFE, and finally large deformation. Large problem, direct path. This is solver which we added in 2014 version. The first one is an automatic option. If I say that, automatically the software is on which solver to use and go with the analysis. How yes, wherein I want to drive you, then I want to understand the capabilities of this different solver and decide solver to use. So in this property, I'm going to deal only with this. The important thing which is very important for an analysis is I mentioned, but I completely skipped because software has the capability to do it automatically. That is so on doing that, I select this create mesh option. Okay. Again, remember that meshing has to happen before solving, no doubt on that side. Okay. So one is by default the software based on the overall geometry size, etc. You find the size of mesh to be created. Okay. I would this is a comparatively simpler model, so it could go ahead, but there could be cases where you want to drive the kind of mesh that you want at a certain location, okay? That's important, and you do it using the options that are sent to us here. Second, just like solver, the solving part of it, you saw three different solvers. We have two different measures also. One is a standard measure, the second is curvature-based measure. Standard measure is our old measure, it's there for quite some years, and now we are moving ahead to this measure called as curvature-based measure. Enhancements are coming into this. It has it is to mesh far complex geometries easily. Uh, you can also use multiple processors and multiple cores. In more uh, interesting geometry recognition features, like if there is any interference between different parts, then you can detect it quite early and tell you even before the meshing process starts. This is wherein I have 10 to 15 parts and I have to exclude a certain or there is a mesh failure on certain parts. And to remesh only that localized single part, then you can use this option. So, meshing purpose, this is again a very good option. This is one important option which I would like to discuss. It's called as draft quality. So, all the elements are of high quality. The tetrahedron, it is a 10 node tetrahedron. But it could be a case wherein I want to neglect nodes on the edges of tetrahedron, then yes, you can do it. 
by selecting this option of draft quality mesh. On doing that, you are selecting or uh, or whatever mesh elements that are created will be of draft quality. I think then what I would like to discuss at the moment on uh, the meshing part of it. One more is an interesting option which I would like to show. Your model is created in this way by the designer. It says wherein I am into designing of uh, these shafts only. Or the important part in this complete setup for me is this shaft. Flywheel is a ready-made flywheel. It is a standard component which I can get from the market. So if that is the case, I can just right-click on the flywheel and need analyze it by the exclude from analysis. On the, it is suppressed. You can the restraint that has been applied on that one is just removed and just hide it. For the inner point of view, it is all there. But for this, the important thing is only this shaft. Now, this year, I'll move it to the uh, place where the flywheel is connected and I just fix it over there and I can go ahead and solve it. See, the important part is my analysis. This that is for more fast. Not only that, it could be a case wherein I want to visualize uh, the part which has been uh, excluded from the analysis into that. It is a very uh, realistic field of setup. So you can see the entire flywheel complete setup, but it is showing the results only for the most important part. Okay. You the uh, result part of it. When you click on displacement and go to edit destination, the option is somewhere over here. Okay. On that, you will get the all the different options necessary for you to control the different options that are shown when you plot the results. So anything you can just scroll through these all options. Those will tell you different options that are present. You're seeing the mesh as well as the results. Or you want the mesh. You can do any of those uh, in terms of results using these different options for here. I can. And even this uh, counter plot over here is sensitive. You click on it, you'll get different options for plotting the results. It could be different for anything. I've heard enough which can tell you how to do a simple structural analysis in solid simulation. We are using an assembly, like different parts to different components, material to different components. We have seen how to create a setup. We have seen the different meshing options. We have seen the different solvers. Uh, seen the way we connect different parts in solid simulation. And finally, we have also covered on how to view or what could be the different options that are available to the that. A two minute break. Uh, I'll check, uh, check the chat window, check the uh, questions panel. Any questions? Feel free to. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm using 2014. And if you of you may not have certain options, if it's not upgraded, please upgrade. If in 2014 we have. We have combined all those settings, uh, chart options, and the definition which are present in the past to a single option that is chart options, settings, definition. This is all come under front end over here. It is interactive, and uh, you can even this tab which is active now yeah, will happen only from 2014. These are a few 2014 new features. Those who are using Solidus Premium and uh, are not using this option. Or uh, not to see it on your software, then um, please add your. Okay, good side on the type of mesh. This is a long discussion, but frankly, for all practical purposes, or especially those entities which are able to be meshed, believe we have the something called as tetrahedron element, and the ones that we are going to use. It could be exist wherein there are thin, long parts. Uh, there are different rules. One of them is the thickness of the part is one-tenth uh, or more than or less than one-tenth of 
dimmum lens present in the overall geometry then it's time to move on to something called as uh shell element go in for shell elements these are the two elements where in the thickness is defined using an value you am the thickness for that and see it could be beam element now this in long structure uh, wherein you are defining only the cross section and on which it is present and that is it that is going to define the beam we can get torsional properties we can define the details so based on the structure based on the kind of analysis that you are doing based on the accuracy level that you need uh, you can move on to different type of machine long discussion this is questions wherein you are asking me uh, the uh, how to decide and which type of machine to use the red color means that it is dangerous to proceed with the analysis now for all, try to understand that the chart is showing a variation and those that variation is being shown in the form of color now this is moving all the way from blue to red now it could be that even this red color is quite uh, the red color or the maximum value it just signifies the maximum value that is being seen here it does mean that it is bad okay now you why this this match it could be in the negative direction so just the color do not decide it the values are important okay now if it is a stress plot if this particular stress is uh, cross certain limit then it is going to be bad now what is that mean it could be the yield stress of the component if at all it is crossing that particular value then it are uh, dangerous for the uh, analysis to be seen Now, uh, you can see over here the max value. Is, uh, let me change unit. Okay, there is one more question on how to change the unit. It is over here. Uh, when you plot the results, after you select the kind of results to be seen, you can select units for here. So, and okay, now I, I pin and accept. Okay, so here you can see the max stress is coming over here, and it is, it is in the tune of red mega pascal. typically for such cranks the yield strength could be anywhere up to 250 pascal so that uh, even though this is red it is below and if i see it compared to a uh, yield stress of 250 we have atrophic safety of 2 over here so this is quite strong or i permissible so i have two questions on what i discussed now those should be answered now of a factor of safety for a design varies a lot i know few designs where in the factor of safety requirements are as high as 500 or it could be a close requirement as low as 1.1 1.2 1.5 so factor of safety is design uh, defined more from your product and the design that you are doing the uh, importance of that design or the risk that that design poses to the Uh, for people working around it or overall functioning of the entire uh, bigger setup so the safety is completely in your control you need to decide on what is the right factor of safety so the factor of safety is not a software thing it is more of a design uh, it depends on the product that you are designing and we add dynamic loading will definitely see it so now uh, we are to the next kind of analysis and next example uh okay bit more faster because what did as of now was more of a base where you understood uh, um, the um, kind of or the steps required for creating this setup i will now we can move a bit more faster and i'll cover which are the most relevant options which incremental uh, we are doing this analysis for yeah hmm? so one is more on the thermal part of it uh, this example we have taken this uh, you can see the product of a um, coffee jar 
Of the brown part could be a plastic part. There is a glass corner inside which there is coffee, and this coffee is not uh, represented in the form of a liquid, but creating a solid component in the shape of a coffee. Uh, that is, or the amount that is filled inside this jug, and we are representing it as a solid entity. Okay. Now, on this entire setup, the setup now these points that have been mentioned over here tells the details of the setup. It could the coffee is heated at its bottom by to vat. Okay, so bottom we are continuously putting it is just a gas or a heating a uh, uh, cook uh, electric pan where it continuously heated or given a power of around 2000 watt. Hmm? Uh, this is used to maintain the coffee between 180 to 200 degree Fahrenheit. Coffee pot and the top component are at room temperature. So initially they are at room temperature, which is around 72 degree Fahrenheit. It is all at room temperature. The coffee is also maintained at an initial temperature of 195 degree Fahrenheit. Obviously, this is in the atmosphere. There will be heat that will get dissipated to the atmosphere, which is at um, a certain, uh, I would say, room temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. And the uh, heat power or the heating happens only when the temperature of the coffee coffee falls by a certain temperature. So the heating will not happen continuously, but it will um, it will stop as soon as the coffee temperature reaches 200 degree Fahrenheit. And that we are going to use a thermostat which is going to control the way coffee is being heated. So our tutorial which is present online. Again, if you go to tutorials, you'll see that uh, this under simulation professional. Okay, and examples the one which I have taken is this one, thermostat one. This is the common. I'll open this particular tutor. So, how to do the basic steps? So I'm not covering them. If you see, uh, just to show you, uh, as you, when we are creating a new study, there are a kind of analysis. First one we are static. In this case, we are going to use this thermal option. Okay, I am going to use this study has been already created. And okay? not because all those this remains the same. We are just following certain steps. Okay? Now, first of all, for coffee, as at the internal solid component, um, thermal analysis. So the important thing will be the mass density, thermal conductivity, and specificity. So there is also a question in this kind of which says, can we create custom material? So this is material that has been created over here. Typically, you just click over here and you just say new material. You have to give any values over here. Okay. And this is coffee has been created, a new material by name coffee. And the details of the coffee is present. Its details and specific details have been specified over here. Yeah. Okay. Take last again. You can see from our database or create a nylon part or the plastic part which is present at the top over here. Yeah. Now this could be the material detail. Next in over here the global bonded is used. So I'm making it. I'm going to take care of it. Okay. I'm going to start off with the other detail. Now because this is a thermal analysis, you few different options over here. Temperature, convection, heat flux, heat power radiation. Hmm. Now, first of them, first of all, the temperature is different. So, you the entire setup, assuming that it is under the room temperature initially, where it has an initial temperature of 72 degree Fahrenheit. So, we select the entire time, uh, body. Here, I am selecting the uh, um, parts over here, and uh, these, these. Parts are given an initial temperature of uh, 72 degree Fahrenheit. Right. So the coffee is assumed to be initial temperature of 190 degree Fahrenheit. Right. So the definition of initial temperature of coffee and the jug. Okay. Then example on heat power. So bottom of this part over here uh, going to, as I told you, it is going to be subjected to certain heating. Uh, is being done using heat power. And applying 2000 watt over here. The important thing over here is it is not just uh, um, the heat, but we are also giving something called a thermostat 
software here. This is the software here. I'm selecting thermostat and I'm selecting a point somewhere on the coffee, the liquid coffee over here, and telling it this heating will happen only when the temperature falls. Uh, the heat will stop when the temperature falls below 190 degrees Fahrenheit, or the temperature will. Um, um, I think it exactly other way around. The heating will stop when the temperature goes above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and the heating will um, start when the temperature falls below 90 degrees Celsius. So, that, so this particular heating will happen only in this polar time zone. But rather than that, you know, the thermostat will stop the heating at red Fahrenheit. There will obviously be it's a time wherein the heat will be dissipated and the coffee can reach a temperature of around 2 Fahrenheit. After it will start cooling up to 1 degree Fahrenheit, as soon as it reaches 1, the heat starts and the cycle begins. So it should be the process. The way and uh, close this, this is the heat pump. And finally, convection. So we know all this is subject to the atmospheric conditions wherein the temperatures are given over here. Uh, let's find the convection value and the ambient temperature, the atmospheric temperature. Hmm. The surface of the coffee, the top surface of the coffee. Okay. So that mesh can be automatic and uh, just you, <coughs> you see properties of the study. You see think of as transient analysis and second one is steady state. So transient, in this case, it is a time dependent analysis. So remember, now, this is a case of a time-dependent analysis wherein we are going to see the effect on this particular setup over a period of time. Okay. This analysis is being solved for 3600 seconds. Every 60 seconds, we are going to save a result and see the effect. You have two different solvers. You can select automatic and uh, properly decide or you can drive it. So, the initial for a simple thermal analysis this is a transient time dependent analysis. We see the effect of this whole equilibrium, how the itself should vary in the coffee. We use temperatures on these different things like glass and uh, the non plastic part at its top. So you'll see the results in this way. It's a simple uh, distribution. Now, this result is at 3600 seconds. The question previously in the chat on, on how we see the results at different times. So the time dependent analysis, so we need for 3600. Actually, results at different time instance over here. I can change the time. I would like this and see the results at different time. So it could be like this. Okay. I'm interested in having a probe or see the results or the temperatures varying over a period of time. Okay. I can select it. I can select varying over a time. So this is point where we are putting the thermostat at the top of the coffee and if you are here the temperature is varying in uh, as the thermostat is uh, present it is not passing the temperature and for i have selected kelvin over here and i can change the unit to see it inside but if it kelvin then I, it would be maximum temperature that is reached is kelvin minimum is around 356 so this is Excellent. So, time for taking questions. I'll browse the questions panel. Uh, let me start there. Good be at the glass coffee pot on the coffee, right? You are absolutely right. There is, there is, there is a way that one can put a thermostat on a, a coffee. Uh, in this example, I and until we have kept it on the coffee. We can keep it, I think, ideal position would be on the glass. Uh, that aspect. Okay, there is a question. I'm saying that uh, it will take six seconds or 60 minutes to boil. No, I'm not saying that it is going to take 3,600 seconds, but the analysis is being done that much time, and we're going to see the uh, behavior of this entire setup for a period of time. Again, if I use this probe itself and 
if i take this particular graph okay it telling that it has there is a steady state condition even around um, say it is here uh, 760 after say if i complete a complete cycle and if i see a repetition happening it means the steady state has attained that's it so i can follow it only even for 1500 seconds i will look at um, what could it is that with such uh, transient analysis we don't know the final step so we can try out with a bigger step and then see the results uh, in the and the questions if there are any which i can answer now quickly i know it's now so feel free to take a a uh, quick break uh, not big one 2 to 3 minutes there are sense no issues can you see if the glass is broken if it too hot um, i would my answer would be yes in the sense um, we are going to see the stresses that are coming in the glass now obviously not in this analysis this analysis is only telling the temperature variation for this we need to do a structural analysis find the stresses present in different glass components and if they are crossing the being limit of the glass if yes then yeah glass is going to crack the material yeah it would be good or that, that is what is desirable that we know uh the temperature at which uh, or the stresses at which it is going to crack uh, yield or break or it could be the ultimate failure totally when we capture material data uh, um, all those details present inside this material now i take any one of our ready made material you will use something called as tensile strength strength yield strength these are values which are defining the point which it is going to break Uh, if you have it, and we need to find it in some way, by Goldberg from 2014, we are getting a new option over here, which is the bottom. Click here, access more material. So when that option, uh, it it is to take you to a website, which is by material taking and providing a more larger database of material using which uh, or which you can download and as per your convenience. so our material database is not restricted to what you see in the software but your options to go ahead good question can i cut the coffee cup yes we can cut the coffee cup yes we can cut it so you got as uh, i am clipping or section clipping i will select section clipping so you can see the coffee uh, jar now and you are seeing the temperature variation inside you can you can discard the location of this plane um, you can have different options to here you can leave it good question uh, one of the most important output from this uh, analysis will be time time into the, the output that you after what uh, it is going to be at a steady state okay this is that i did now was only into solid entity so the liquid or coffee or the air that is around it is considered Uh, is not simulated in this particular module see that happens in simulation which i'll be covering on uh, wednesday uh, 29th this is only the structural part and to do that we are going to uh, this analysis we have directly applied convection if fluid was present, it is going to dissipate certain amount of heat so it is be added over here and uh, convect are directly given and by giving a certain of h or h we are simulating the fluid simulation we can actually simulate the fluid and find out the 
Results with respect to dye yes, it is always possible. Uh, first analysis that I did of uh, the tank assembly was static analysis. So we cannot see it over there. I'll do one more dynamic analysis where we'll be able to uh, see uh, time effects. We can we can see results at a particular time. No issues on that. Yes, uh, convection values have to be calculated. values um, from some software or we are using some ready-made tables, textbook or known values. So if it is ambient air, uh, uh, the convection values will be around 12 watts per Kelvin. So uh, there are some tasks which do it or it is better to use a software like solid flow simulation that the exact convection and not that the convection can change uh, the surface. We can find out those things and then use it. So I'm just uh, I to move on to the next because uh, it's closing by. But I'll just check. There's one more question, which is a long one. Question: Is it possible to evaluate the efficiency of thermal cooling at steady state? Yes. Uh, not cover in detail on how to do it, but the answer is yes. You can find out the efficiency. Yes. 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 So I'll move on to the next example. On fatigue analysis and to find out the life of a component. Most the most important aspect that the most of the designers want to know. Now, that or the application would be in such a way. Now, an example of a landing gear, it could be of a small aircraft. When the aircraft lands, we know it could be a different kind of force loading that comes on this complete mechanism. And we do understand. Obviously, in such cases or such critical applications, we can wait till earlier. We need to understand the life of those components well before they are on the field. So, you no, know, a 1000 landing, the, uh, um, the some important parts in this mechanism we replace for it to function safely uh, even after that. So, that first step over here, and I get rid of certain uh, or I find out. Uh, the most important thing that is the life of the component. The typical things like this, or it could be case wherein you are offering certain kind of warranty or guarantee. We are finding or we are specifying the life of the component. You said that a particular product is going to work for one hour seamlessly. So yes, before that we are going to incur warranty cost. If it uh, things far far after that, then obviously it is a over design. Uh, as a designer, we want to ensure that the work life is perfect as per what the warranty specifications are. So now let's have a look at this example of uh, layer. Good tutorials. It is in simulation professional. Tom is here. Okay. So step in this typical structural analysis. What we did on the top or uh, uh, this remains the same. The first example that you saw is the crank assembly. So all steps remain the same, and the study is already created. So you are going to apply the loads, boundary conditions, and do a stress analysis. Now, at any case, it could be at the maximum load that is coming on the part. It could be a minimum load, or any particular case. The defining, asking it to define the whole setup. So it could be the first step. Second. Here is what the new steps start. That is when you create a new simulation study. 
there is something called as fatigue analysis because here and fatigue you have different options one is constant amplitude or be variable amplitude now in this example that i showed you that is of a crank assembly a constant amplitude example when the uh, wheel is continuously rotated and duties are varying over a period of time continuously so it could be on the way random case like this which is a well amplitude history data you can select that and proceed so and go over here a new study which looks like this their important thing will be the material property now we have certain set of material database over here which we already have the answer the curve which is going to help the software find out the at a certain from any one of uh, these uh, cases. Uh, I think there are some audio issues. Let me check. Uh, yeah, my voice has gone. Okay, back. Excellent. Okay. But both the inputs, voice has gone. Now it's back. Uh, all, those are missed it. I think you have missed um, uh, here, wherein you are going into properties. Uh, I wanted to show you was this option. or wherein we are defining the number of bins that are used for capturing different frequencies more the bins more the listing we define the stress level i'm sorry the type of stresses that are used for calculation of the alternating stresses we define uh, the stress correction uh, present that is uh, being used so could be a few finer details and this analysis is quite fast because it is more of a post processing it is using stresses directly from the static analysis and you the like in that you can understand the kind of damage that has happened so over here the maximum damage is happening on this shaft over here or we can also understand life that is consumed or life that is available you have other options like we can define a rain flow matrix and because you can see a short on time uh, but if all we are going to do a simple fatigue analysis this would be the step there are things where defining the material properties and that is the sn curve and the fatigue event that is nothing more uh, let's move into the next kind of analysis
Uh, question, please use the uh, um, uh, question over the chat window. which I believe I should address now, that is, can include cracks in the analysis. Now, uh, the fatigue analysis is that module that we have and what I showed you, for high cycle fatigue, uh, it is not going to simulate low cycle fatigue failure because of cracks. So, uh, unfortunately, at this point of time, we are not simulating the crack proportion or what would happen if a crack is there and how is it going to propagate inside the setup. So, that is not covered at uh, the moment. As I told you, a very interesting and most useful one, that is optimization uh, will be covered now. Now, an example uh, uh, from an online tutorial, you will get this slide, tell you which examples that I have covered in detail. Now, uh, if uh, let me open the help again, okay, here it is. Okay. So for the setup, if you see again, another structural analysis has been done. Detail, you are defining the reference places where it is going to be held, the non to be held, and it is going to be applied with a torque. We are going to rotate it, wing it is being applied with a torque of 15 newton meter. Now, result it is a simple stress analysis, so you are getting different results. So interest over here is I want to optimize or divide or reduce orientations that we are seeing on the screen over here. It could be the Okay, the drift. It could be the thicknesses over here. It could be uh, the material that has been used. I'll reduce the overall mass of this knob. Such the uh, while I also want to ensure that the factor of safety or the detail remain at certain level. So my goal, my goal is to reduce the overall mass. I'm going to tell the software which are the uh, components or features wherein I'm reducing. And finally, uh, I want to give some constraints, that is the dimensions or the values within which it can play. So when either click over here on the study, you will see something called as design study. So this is the one which is going to help you create a new optimization study. Uh, there is that has been already created. I'm, I'm going to use that directly instead of creating a new one. Just like this, uh, when I create a new study, at the bottom, you will see something called as add parameter. So, are parameters that we need to add, and these are parameters which will be weighed for optimization. In the case wherein I want to add a parameter for this um, thickness over here, yeah. the thickness of it, I can, if you see here, I can give a name. You can, what is it? It is the modern dimension, it could be a global wave. It could be some simulation output, or it could be the material that with, with which you play. Uh, then I can select the dimension that I want to play with. I can just select it, and it comes down over here, and that, that is it. So this metric can be defined over here. You can see there are different parameters like grip thickness, cut depth, cylindrical height, and cylindrical diameter. These parameters have been defined. They specify either these parameters within a certain range or within a range with a step, or it could also be with discrete values. So we can specify the details with the minimum and maximum values. That told you we need to do some constraint. So only constraint is the factor of safety is always greater than two. So it is the overall dimensions, but it should not be as that the stresses go very high and the analysis is very poor. So we cannot do that. Uh, we are playing within the certain parameters, so the factor of safety should be greater than 2. 
Finally, we want to optimize on the mass that is reduce the over mass uh, to the minimum. So this is what we need to specify over here. But the factor of safety defined using sensor. You might learning in solids we have something called a sensor. So mass and factor of safety are the two sensors that have been defined over here. On the you'll see the run option. You need to select optimization and and that is it. So once we trigger the solution. Or you can see it has tried out with different different views. The red or the brownish ones are telling us that these are not visible iterations. Uh, the gray ones are the visible iterations. And of the gray ones, it is coming up with a final iteration solution, which is the most optimal one. So the initial shape of the knob over here, and this is the final optimal shape of the knob. Now this one automatically. You can see lower here, and this is the final optimal shape. So this can quickly we can define all the details and go ahead with the analysis. So while I will speak, ask if any questions. We are at the end of the session. Uh, a maximum five more minutes. I'm going to show you two more examples. Uh, these are the very quick ones on nonlinear analysis. Uh, I'm going to cover the most uh, differentiating thing that we need to do in nonlinear analysis, or what's done differently, and the dynamic analysis or the time-dependent analysis. Okay, I'll go from software. Uh, for this, are under simulation premium. Okay, the example which I mentioned you was this one. The here, uh, click example. Uh, the same. Same as that of a spectral analysis, the difference or the addition that is coming up for here is material. Now, over this particular component that is seen on the screen is made of rubber. What I need to do is define the rubber properties. So here, as soon as we go into non-linear, we'll get this different kind of material model or hyperelastic movement in rubber has been used. So linear material. So whenever it's a non-linearity, one non-linearity could be due to material that has been defined over here, and the relevant properties. This huge field in itself, it will take a time to explain, but telling you the differentiating thing, the material, and it will be things. But this is pseudo time. If necessary, we can do a non-linear dynamic with actual effects also, and see the results. So if I show this example. Excellent. It looks. So fine. You could see this rubber component which is getting compressed and uh, all the way inside. Now obviously this is a huge non-linear behavior in the terms of material. The large displacement also and this is using the non-linear dynamics. Um, here as soon as this dynamics, the same effects are going to come into picture. And in this particular example, it is a case of a basketball ring. Which whenever the ball is being put, it's either due to the ball or due to the person's hand, which is going to hit the ring over here, which is one that is shown over here. This force is being added over there. If I go that analysis, the difference that comes up over here is, if I go in force, hmm, force, uh, same, except at the bottom over here, you will see we have to give a curve over here. Okay. If I to view it in a bigger screen, you see it looks like this. So this is finding the flat is coming up. So from at zero instant, a huge force of one unit is going to be applied. And this, after it hits the color ring at the end, it passes to an zero and instant the 0.5 seconds and it is three. But what happens when such a force comes on this uh, and it uh, collapses? The pump starts oscillating. Take the behavior at the somewhere at the point over here. Let me check this. So you can, this is the way it looks. 
So there is a huge hit at the uh, ring at the end, and then it is going to slowly uh, dissipate. Uh, it oscillates. Now the dynamic analysis where I'm going to has been done is an impulse load has been applied and going to subside over a period of time. So you only have to point for it. There are some more sequences here, and then it comes down to zero point eight seconds. So this example of a dynamic analysis. Uh, I'm not going deep into it because we are almost at the end of the time. But so these tutorials should guide you through and uh, cover most of the things uh, that uh, that we require to understand. So I move into the last part of my discussion. Any questions? I think, but um, I'll take them later. Um, I'll just close the questions window. We'll move into the final part of it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, actually, I'm sure uh, there should be many questions in your mind. Uh, more now, once you start using the software, you should get those questions. Uh, we always have our local connections to our work, and you can always contact me if I can be of any help. Uh, the, so the future course of action would be something like this. Uh, we are uh, going to help you out with a 15 days evaluation license. And either you can contact your R or then we'll definitely contact you based on a call that will happen after this slide. The query uh, question on uh, what would you, how would you like to go ahead with it? Uh, give your uh, input or. Uh, by what the license that you are getting is simulation premium, so it lower all the capabilities that are available in SOLIDWORKS simulation module. So make make use make maximum use of that one. Uh, it is to help you explore the complete capabilities of this particular view. Uh, next, I told you I myself have gone through those tutorials. We do it in a similar way. The tutorials are all case study based and not feature based. So they define a problem and they solve that problem. So you understand how to solve a certain problem in this software or application based. Try to go through those tutorials. Uh, try to maximum number of tutorials. My suggestion would be if you are already comfortable with SOLIDWORKS, you should be able to finish in a time period of seven to eight days or maximum 10 days. You should be able to finish most of the tutorials of your interest. I'm sure you are interested in doing your own example, so try one at least one of your own examples to uh, see how you can uh, implement it in your company or your design process. Of course, if you uh, have any doubts or questions, feel free to contact your VAR or us. We can definitely help you understand those different aspects where you are getting stuck. And finally, if it all fits the requirement, I'm I'm very happy if you decide to plan or invest in this particular form. Okay. So much. Uh, you, uh, Paul will be opened very soon. Yeah, it's almost trigger. You should be able to see it now. Give your opinion uh, on how you want to proceed. Uh, questions are uh, rather you would see five different questions. The first or most of you would like to opt for. That you would like to request for a 15 day trial of solid simulation, please call me to discuss. Yeah, I am sure you, the people who might be busy now cannot evaluate now. Of course, I would like to discuss with us in detail. So, second option, and in future, whenever you are interested, you can definitely evaluate it. To request an in person demonstration, maybe what I told you was not clear, or there are many points I know simulation is very important. Feel more detailed demonstration of the software to one of our partners. We'll definitely do that. In the case wherein you are already using other solution, no problem. I will uh, we'll have more things to compare when you saw the presentation today. Uh, nothing wrong. Feel free to evaluate, or you can always go ahead and see the solution, the way it works, the way we are working. Okay, there is a point for comparison. And it could be a case wherein you are already using. Solid as premium. I saw a few questions related to that, but it could be that you are not using it. Unfortunately, either due to time or not invested uh, your uh, time into understanding how it works. Those could be the cases. Feel free to 
uh, this session should be your interest into solder premium please explore it and uh, definitely uh, you have you saw a few more features or few more applications which you may have if you said you are definitely open for trying out an evaluation so all the op options are in front of you the link is open please the following time and give your input uh, of course uh, i will keep this open for another 5 to max 10 minutes um uh, the chat window is open if any questions please ask. and of course you are always open to attend the flash training that is going to happen tomorrow and the flow simulation training that is going to happen on 30th october uh, very much uh, those who want to leave feel free uh, please give your opinion to the polling panel and uh, the chat window